Yeah, and this is where I tell people, build your team, okay? Now, it does not mean, building your team does not mean go hire 10 people or anything like that. No, build connections. Build mm -hmm. connections with your loan officers, with Malcolm, build connections with people, other wholesalers that are more experienced, other investors that are more experienced that can help you run the numbers and help you uh, look to see what you're not seeing. We all have blinders because we see a deal. We need to open up our eyes and building our team helps open up our eyes by, Absolutely. hey, can you, can you run through this? Can you, can you, can you look at this again? Can you see how, you know, how we run the numbers? Are these numbers, am, am I missing something? You know, right. things right. like that. Right. So right. Ab absolutely. It, well, and, yeah. and here's the thing. I know that there might be some investors that are thinking, well, man, what I'm offering and how much I'm making and what my hours, that's, a, that's, a, that's my business. That's true. Yes. However, underwriters on the lending side, we're doing that math sooner yep. or later in the process. We're doing that same math because from our perspective, if it's a bad deal, and I say a bad deal, let's say it's barely going to make money. Mm -hmm. Our perception is if he's paying us two grand a month and he's only making 400 bucks a month, right? At some point, resentment is going to build in because the bank in his mind is making more money than he is as the investor. And how likely is he to default? And how likely? Well, and, and maybe not right. A, how likely to default? But even even more common than that, Randy, is how likely is he or she to put the deferred maintenance Mm -hmm. and and make the improvements you know what i'm saying yep do, do the repairs and the capital e expenditures yep. that they need to keep the collateral up yeah you know because i don't want to you know i i never want to take back the property i'm in the paper game yeah you guys are in the property game <laughs> right i yep. i do not want property this is not a loan to own situation <laughs> hey, I want right. to be in your game. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not my thing, right? Yeah. So if 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 I feel like, man, this is a bad deal, they're going to sour on the deal, and then they're not going to do the maintenance, and then the property, if we have to take it back, is going to be worth less. Yes. Right? Well, okay, so now what do I got to do? Take this property back and then hire someone to go in there and rehab it? And do the mm -hmm. things that it should have done been done already you know it's already going to be expensive right you know so we don't want we want to see a healthy roi for the investor because we know that deal is going to be viable long term you know and if it's not we're going to ask them well, what's your plan because man this this looks really thin you know and they're going to say oh well, i plan on doing this i'm going to change this da, 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 da. okay great if there is no plan mm -hmm. and it's like man he's his ri is, is is barely equal to the interest rate on the loan yeah we're not gonna so not is gonna that work. is that the reason why you ask for a scope of work on uh from a contractor when you do like a hard money loan or a construction loan whether it be commercial or residential doesn't matter right right so, well that's that's a that's a scenario where we're going to say i plan on you know putting in 50 grand Mm -hmm. And this thing is going to go from, let's say, five hundred thousand to six fifty. Got it. Like, okay, so we're going to take that scope of work and that rehab budget, and we're going to give it to the appraiser, and we're going to yeah. say to the appraiser, "Tell us the value as is." Mm -hmm. Now tell us the value after implementing this scope of work. Got it. Right. And sometimes the numbers there, you know, sometimes it's not. No, I 100% I agree with you on that. Um, the numbers don't lie. And that's one thing I learned. The The numbers don't lie to what it is. They, they may try to lie for what the value could be. And that's what I noticed people seeing is, mm -hmm. oh yeah, my house is worth arbitrary use um, uh, 500,000, okay? Oh, it's worth 500,000. That's what Zillow says. But you need 
70 grand worth of work in order to make it actually worth 500,000. Right, right. Well, and I'm not going to put- Once in a while you'll get, in, you'll get into a situation where it'll be, th this is not typical, but it, it, it happens. Yeah. Well, I'll get into a discussion with an investor where their number's too low. Yeah. Right, so I, example, I'm, I'm working on a, a warehouse deal in um, New York State, okay? okay? And it's a huge building, almost 400,000 right. square feet, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're like, they're, they're buying this building for $2 million, okay? And um, and actually, they, they bought it for $2 million. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna put some, you know, they need another two and a half to do some substantial repairs mm -hmm. uh, to the building, okay? And then when it's done, it's gonna be worth seven. Okay. okay? So in their, from their brain, okay? Yeah. So I'm doing the math and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. If I take, the, if the average square footage, uh, uh, price per square foot in Rochester, New York is for, for industrial, for industrial. Yeah. For industrial, it's seven thousand, and you know, like seven eighty-two a square foot, times three hundred seventy-seven thousand square feet, right? Mm -hmm. That's a huge freaking number. Yeah. Right. Industrial tenants are triple net typically. Okay. Okay. So all you have to cover as a landlord is the outside of the building, mm -hmm. right? So the lights on the on the exterior of the building, make sure the roof is solid, the walls are good. And you know maybe security for the whole property, yeah. right? Yeah. The fencing, very little expenses. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing this math, and I'm like, man, this is like a ten, twelve million dollar building, depending on what you guys charge. That says now, let's say we don't do seven dollars. What if we did five? Well, we go back through the math again, and I'm like, okay, I'm at ten, at five bucks. Am I missing something? And the guy's like, they can't, they can't be worse. So why is that? Because my expense is going to be five hundred thousand dollars. How? Yeah. Help. This is a math thing. Let's go through it. Here's the taxes. Taxes are fifty thousand a year. The yep. you know the you know utilities, which are which are light because yep. the tenants are covering the utilities, right? Da, da, da. We go through all the categories. Do all these make sense? Yes. That's two hundred thirty-three thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, 1.5 million in income. So, where's the other 200? You know, yeah, 250 thousand bucks, right? We do. Would I miss something? Well, no, that's right. Okay. Well, now let's take that net, 1.2 divided by, yeah, right, a conservative cap rate, right? If, unless you use 10. Mm -hmm. That's twelve million dollars. Oh, that can't be right. Well, and getting to your point, Randy, the math. Yes. Is the math. Yes. Right. So I'm. I'm. So he was thinking I'm going to have some of these tenants, and I'll be a little loosey goosey with them. And I'm like, no. If you actually run this property professionally, mm -hmm. you know, there's a ton more value here than you think you know yes. and even we, we chopped the numbers down to like four bucks a square foot okay. right which i told him doesn't make sense because you got 28 tenants and look at your rent roll this tenant is paying you six bucks a square foot this tenant is paying you five bucks a square foot this tenant is paying you seven dollars a square foot mm -hmm. why would you charge someone four bucks right you're already getting that from your existing tenants. You know, and he's that doesn't make sense, right? And he's like, yeah. But that number just can't be. And I was like, dude, you, you got a better deal than you thought, but you can't run it like a multifamily. So I got a question. Did, like he, a did he get it for two million? Oh yeah. Holy he sure shit. did. He sure Damn. did. He Got it on land contract. Okay. And I, my first reaction, and sometimes I'm, I'm way too blunt. I was like, wow, this seller was an idiot, right? He's like, yeah. oh, the guy's not stupid. The guy's not stupid. I'm like, oh, is he your friend? 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to such such a friend. <laughs> but I'm just looking at, you know, now there was a lot of space that he didn't lease, and the guy basically was trying to be an absentee landlord. Yeah. And half the tenants were month. I say half. Seventy-five percent of the tenants were month, month to month. month. Okay. Right. And I I truly believe in my heart of hearts, the seller was not banking all of that money. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Because I got the distinct impression that some of these tenants were paying them like directly. You know what yeah. I mean? He's like he's you know, and then the, the, the guy I was walking I was I'm talking to said the word for me, you know, money laundering. <laughs> I'm like because if there's yeah. like, you know, I'm looking at the leases. And if they're yep. paying this much, but he's only showing this much on, on his bank statements, because mm -hmm. the bank statements did not match the rent roll. Got it. So one of the so one or the two are wrong. Yep. And he's like, oh no, they're paying it. And I'm like, okay, he's just not counting. He's like, yeah, he's not. Yeah. Okay. So he screwed himself, honestly. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. And honestly, my client was a little tempted to take some of that same type of, you know, um, um, freedom mm -hmm. with the numbers that the other guy was taking. And I was like, you're going to screw yourself. Yeah. If you account for everything and you do it the right way, there's going to be five million more in value in this property that you expect that you will then be able to tap yeah. on a tax free basis when we do the cash out refi later. And that right there, I'm gonna tell you, people are tempted to do that and be like, because I don't want the government to get it. I don't want the government to touch it or anything like that. The government doesn't touch debt. That's right. Period. So if your plan is to cash out refi, do everything the right way, account for everything, so that when you can get that cash out refi, that all of that money, is yours to put into other businesses, other adventures, whatever it may be. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Because the government's absolutely. not going to touch your debt. That's right. Okay. People don't get it. The only people that do get it are the people that have um, ha have listened to, read the books of Robert Kiyosaki. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, or other people who said that. But like people like Dan Dave Ramsey fans have debt properly because you need to make sure that you're cash flowing. Uh, and, and let me let me be clear. My firm, Castle Commercial Capital, we set it up 16 years ago. Okay. Um, February um, 9th, uh, 2007. Right, right before yep. everything went to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's a, that's the best timing right there. Best timing, and I was doing, uh, it, you know, in two thousand and six, I was doing residential mortgages um, out of uh, Livonia for this this company. I was hiring like waiters, and they like literally they would recruit waiters and 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 bus boys mm. and say, "Hey, you want to make ten grand next month?" You know, yeah, and they're like, "I was like, yeah," and and you know one of the, the the owner of the company would take a couple other guys that used to be bus boys and they're like yeah i was over at you know olive garden and yeah i did eight grand last month I'm, the guy's like really and then they would just basically put them in front of a dialer and they yeah. would dial people all around the country and say hey i can i can refi your place and save you 200 dollars a month and folks would go okay and then they would fedex them a whole long packet this was obviously wow. before you had <laughs> excuse me electronic signatures and yeah, you know, yeah. all that other stuff and this guy was was doing huge mortgage business um mm -hmm. out of uh out of the shop and but i would not sell a bad deal you know because yeah. once i once i got out of uh, real estate i went into uh, financial services financial planning right mm -hmm. so i was series 7 series 63 that kind of stuff so i came out of the the formal training of you have a fiduciary responsibility to do the right thing for your client. So um, I did a, I had a prison guard in Detroit that I got, I got a mortgage for like $85,000. Okay. FHA fixed rate. Mm -hmm. And my manager was like, what the hell are you doing Malcolm? 
you could have got this guy a $300,000 mortgage. You know, I'm like, yeah, but that would have been an option arm, which are garbage. And this guy's yeah. a prison guard on a fixed income. He's not married. Mm-hmm. He's not going to be an entrepreneur. He has, there's no, you know, he, he's not yeah. on a track where he's going to make more money. And if that mortgage moves, he's screwed. You know, yeah, but you could have made five, six grand. And you're making like $600. Yeah, but aren't we supposed to do the right thing for our client? Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. Bankers don't, don't think about that. Right